Thank you, Kenji. Uh, and good morning, everyone. Um, uh, and it's lovely to see so many people here this morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, this uh, session is really around the report on remote learning that Education Scotland is uh, about to publish. Um, we believe that will be next week at the College Expo that the, the report will be published by Education Scotland. And what we did, we looked at various aspects that we wanted to cover um, for the report. And the, 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 the section that we're covering this morning was on um, assessment and uh, assessment models and, uh, and monitoring of learner progress. And I wanted to give you give some brush, uh, give broad brush uh, ideas of what's in the report from this aspect, not, not to give it you know, away before you read it, but also to talk about some of the good practice that we found when we were there. And in this section, there was quite a few examples of good practice. Um, and one that really stood out for us was City of Glasgow uh, College and the way that they support uh, their lecturing staff and other staff in being able to um, a, 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 a have the right kind of tools and resources uh, available to be able to ensure that the assessment procedures work for them and work for the learners. And we're going to hear from Fiona Balach and Joe Wilson this morning from City of Glasgow um, around, around that, uh, principally from Fiona, I think, who's got a presentation for us as well. Uh, Jason, could we put up my first slide, please? Um, uh, so I'm Peter Connolly, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I am now um, officially the second longest HMI it's uh, longest serving HMI, um, that is, uh, nearly 20 years uh, in, in, in this role. And um, and I've been involved in the college team all of those years, but also in um, the work-based learning aspect around apprenticeships and careers, information advice and guidance. I uh, was one of the people that produced a synthesis for this part of the, the, the so looking at the various reports from around the, the colleges in Scotland that we, we went to for this aspect of it. So Jason, next slide, please. Um, we're looking at strengths and we're looking at areas for development, but also um, what national bodies could uh, could do as well uh, to, to help the situation. So um, the first thing revolves around strengths and when we look at the college approaches and the CLPL opportunities that colleges made available to staff, um, what we found, first of all, is that colleges were very proactive in supporting learners during uh, the COVID restrictions period. Um, and we got a feedback from learners, really forcible feedback that learners felt that staff had gone an extra, the extra mile to make them feel supported on their programmes. Um, so we found it, we found that the colleges had introduced ideas and, and procedures such as learning technology help desks. Um, we had learning technologists in many colleges who were uh, front facing and were um, helping students uh, to do that and to access and to use materials. We also found that, and very importantly, that colleges prioritised uh, uh, mental, learner mental health and well-being. So they understood there were issues around um, uh, this new approach uh, to using these online resources and to do, doing things differently and the stresses that, 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 that could come from that. So um, it was very important that um, uh, the colleges were able to, to, to do that. And using the VLE and using other resources, um, it turned things around the corner to make things more engaging in that kind of way, way of working. The CLPL opportunities that staff uh, were able to access made it clear that how staff could understand what the v, how the VLE could be used, um, how, for instance, to use it, uh, Microsoft Teams properly um, and to deliver and monitor assessment and, 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 and using those tools to do that effectively. And in addition to that, there were also a lot of practical short courses that colleges put on uh, to be able to ensure that staff were um, following regulations, understood things, and were supported uh, uh, in the right way. And secondly, there about the regular check-ins with learners and communication and feedback. 
as you would imagine, in in a period that we've just had and we're still going through, um, the high level of communication between college staff and learners was absolutely critical um, to ensure that people were still remaining on courses, didn't have any issues around the kit they were using or the um, uh, uh, the way that assessments were actually being planned, um, and so that they would get feedback from uh, the the staff on how well they were doing in particular areas of their program. So, and we're going to hear about um, the process that uh, Glasgow City used with regards to that called feed forward, and I think it was very important that. That, that, that helped that idea that, that, that students and learners felt that they were, were progressing and that they were able to, 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 move, to move on. Um, I think the fact that they've made a, 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 um, adjustments to the assessment arrangements is to great, their great credit in colleges in Scotland. Um, we know that practical areas have really suffered in, uh, uh, from COVID restrictions because learners and staff have been unable to access um, a, a resources at college or at work. Um, and college staff have been really tremendous at trying to come up with creative solutions, using virtual reality in many cases to be able to assess progress, assess competencies, uh, and to meet the demands of uh, 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 awarding bodies. But I think it was also very important, not just for that, that they also wanted to to, to generate a learning episode, um, which was meaningful um, and appropriate for learners within the, the subject areas. And so they used a lot of things like, for instance, uh, 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 you know, electronic portfolios came into their own, I think, in, in, in this world. And there was also a greater emphasis on um, a formative assessment, um, a, you know, as a source for student performance, but also as a way in which they were able to check clearly where the, the, the student was at any time. And the use of uh, recorded lessons and uh, uh, asynchronous uh, learning was very important as well, because people, we know, that we know students have busy lifestyles. We know they can't all be sitting at the, at the screen at the same time and juggling other responsibilities at home or at work. So that was really, really important that they were able to do that. Next slide, please, Jason. Um, the main challenges um, that came up constantly for us when we talked to our colleges um, were, was that the additional time pressures and staff, and I think we shouldn't um, miss that as a really important point because to prepare and amend uh, learning and assessment materials, first of all, is very difficult and time consuming, but also marking those assessments can be very time consuming too. And it's a different way of doing things. It's a different way of providing feedback. So that was a challenge that just about all colleges really, really felt. Um, the practical skills development, well, we know that was a, 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 a huge issue because um, they couldn't get access to the types of things um, uh, that they needed to and access to these resources for equipment and equipment for assessment procedures um, to help with their proficiency was, was lacking in many respects and, and, and that had to be held back until a time and now we know that they're rushing through many of these aspects now. So for instance, I heard yesterday that a lot of the beauty, uh, beauty students can now uh, do facials, um, which they weren't allowed to do because people can now remove masks. And I know that colleges are rushing through on the assessment of that. Gains from the SQA, well, um, uh, you know, we, the feedback we received and the, the comments we were getting was that um, the SQA approaches and summative assessment were provided too late in many respects, and we were told that they didn't have sufficient clarity, um, which caused high level of high levels of stress for both staff and learners. Um, also, challenges to reassessment came through. Um, uh, 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 as well, making sure every you know you collect the right kind of data to make uh, evidence to make sure that they are actually passing. Um, variable approaches to delivering feedback. We found that um, there was different paces. Uh, some learners were very happy with it, 
other, but there was a, a lot of learners who said, well, it was sometimes it was slow. It wasn't as prompt as it should be. And so it wasn't uniform across all colleges. And lastly, the digital fatigue being, ex being experienced by both. I don't think we can uh, 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 really not put this as a priority because of the digital exhaustion, digital fatigue that people have. It's not simply putting on a college programme onto an online uh, a, a resource. Um, it's about learners' engagement and motivation as well as staff motivation and engagement. And it's about this digital fatigue being experienced by, by both. And uh, last slide, please, Jason. We, all, we asked uh, the colleges what further support would help improve remote learning. And they came out and said things like sharing uh, national resources uh, uh, across colleges, across departments, and increased collaboration uh, to develop so that you could share resources, share time, share pressure, and it would avoid any duplication. And that was an important aspect. The connectivity, particularly in rural areas, is something that's beyond colleges to, to, to be able to fix. Uh, it has to be much wider than that. Um, but most certainly, um, uh, some people did suffer uh, uh, because of where they lived with regard to connectivity uh, and they didn't have the access that they, they wanted or could, uh, could, should have. Um, and again, the Timmy's guidance from SQA comes through here about the fact that um, um, we want to remove pressure, not add to pressure when the guidance isn't there. And lastly, diagnosing learning difficulties uh, from a remote setting, uh, we found that um, colleges would appreciate uh, more help uh, and more cl and, and, and clearer national guidance um, from central agencies on how to diagnose these difficulties, learning difficulties that learners suffer from um, while we're in this remote setting. Um, so that those are the main issues. I, I can't go into it too much because we've yet to publish it. Um, but uh, you'll find that uh, there'll be that will be the kind of thematics that's coming through. But we'll also have a, a, other examples of good practice that uh, uh, will be will be there for you to to have a look at. And I know that we're going to look at how we can actually generate work uh, and collaborative work around these things going forward, so that everybody is sharing a burden and and and, and can help each other when it comes to it. I'm going to come out of this, Jason, um, and uh, uh, pass on to Fiona. Um, I'm, uh, uh, and great, I'm very grateful to City of Glasgow uh, to, for, for uh, being able to do this for us. Uh, Joe and Tom and Fiona were great to speak to and very open and willing to help us with this. So thanks to, thanks to them right up front for doing it. So I'll pass on to Fiona and she can tell us about the City of Glasgow experience. Super, thanks very much. Um, I've put in the chat for everyone a link to this presentation because within it, there's more links to other resources which you're very welcome to use or share as widely as you like. Um, today, we're going to be looking at um, support, how we support online assessment. Uh, so my name is Fiona Balog and I'm the curriculum head in the Learning and Teaching Academy and my area is lecturer development. So first of all, let's have a look at some of the comments we've had from our staff. Um, it kind of shows how assessment's changing at City of Glasgow College. Um, in common with many of you, I'm sure, uh, we've moved um, wholesale towards far greater instances of asynchronous assessment, where, where we're bound to have um, to closed book assessment. We're focusing on how we can do that effectively through remote online invigilation. Not an easy task. I think everyone's been struggling with this. Um, our feedback, which Peter talked about, um, we're focusing far more on feed forward. So task-based feedback, which is being um, uh, uh, where tasks are set um, by lectures but, and collaboration with students or generated by students themselves. And we're also looking at the quality of our assessments uh, particular asynchronous assessments um, to try and minimise the amount of contract cheating um, and um, improve the, the, the cognitive challenge of assessments while still lowering the assessment burden and, and making assessments seem more manageable, which, which is quite a challenge. So in relation to that feedback, let's have a look at some of the ways that we're supporting students, uh, supporting lecturers within the college. 
So on this slide, and we've got links to this um, already, um, you've got um, the three ways in which we're mainly supporting our lecturing staff in, in uh, their development and use of online assessment. First of all, just as um, the COVID hit, we've been redesigning our um, assessment policy and procedures. And by their very nature, these are kind of skinny documents and lecturers wanted more than that. So for the first time, we've created an assessment and feedback guide, which is um, a, a kind of one-stop shop, downloadable document with lots of really practical ideas and tools and activities for lecturers, whether lecturers new to the college or more experienced lecturers uh, can really help them get to this assessment. And what, one thing that lecturers did say was that in relation to SQA and other awarding bodies, they felt the information was everywhere and they wanted all the links to the key information about assessment for, for, um, um, uh, for this academic year and next academic year all in one place. And the guide corrals all that together as well. And I'll be referring to parts of the guide as we go through today. In addition to that, we have um, uh, an open source website and um, please feel free to share that and use that. And you can also contribute to our website as well um, because there's an aspect of, of, of sharing uh, good practice within the website. I'm just going to click to the website now to give you a, a sneaky look at it. So in this website on lecture development, um, it's organized around four different areas pathway of five levels for lecturers development, each um, aligned to different courses, which of course um, have elements of development of assessment practice. What I'd like to focus on is this part called tasks. So um, in this part of our website, you've basically got 14 um, sets of tasks and many of them relate to assessment. So here we go, assessment, minimizing cheating, purpose of assessment, feed up, forward and back. I'll just click on one at random, let's go for assessment. So when you go in here, you'll see this set has got different buttons. Each button um, contains a slide deck with a task, the information to do the task, and then a go further section to stretch you more if you want to. I'll just open one up. Let's go for assessment, let's just see still what it looks like. And feel free to use these you know, with, with your students in your college, with your lectures in your colleges. The first slide, you know, um, just is your um, uh, cover slide. And then after that, you have your right here. Um, so the task here is um, which of the following 15 assessment literacy skills um, training and support activities would be most beneficial to your students? How would you integrate them? And then after that, definitions, and then there's a variety of tasks. And at the end, there's a go further slide for people who want to do an extension. So that, that's how um, the support works on the website. Uh, if I come back, I'll show you one more thing in relation to the website and assessment. We also have a self-evaluation section. In this, there's a downloadable checklist which goes into your Google Drive. And for people who like checklists, um, this is a way for lecturers to evaluate their assessment skills in relation to professional standards. So there are, there are statements, 25 statements in different areas. I'll go down to the one area in relation to assessment. Evaluate. So you've got five statements in relation to assessment. The place to take off you feel you, you meet that, um, uh, you comply with that, that statement. Um, if you feel you need more further development work in relation to that statement, want to know more, you can click and it'll take you to the tasks in the website for you to do tasks. And also there's a link to the area of the professional standards that, that relates to. So we have our guide, we have our website, and um, how, how we populate these um, two areas is through culling best practice from what our lectures are actually doing with students. We're running workshops um, open to the whole college and we're also running targeted workshops to curriculum teams, which actually have been more successful in the last year. And um, it's more personalized to specific teams on assessment, on feedback, on, on other areas. And through these workshops, 
we're learning the good practice that's taking place around the college. And this good practice, we're, we're posting and encouraging lecturers to post within the website. And it's feeding into the guide. We're already in version three of the guide. We only, um, it's only under a year old, actually. So we're, we're continuously updating our guide. We also have Microsoft Teams where, where lecturers post examples and we, we take things out of there and put those within the website and the guide. The, the shared practice um, page of the website, I'll just show you what it looks like and how it's populated. It's where people can also sign up for teammates that they run as well. Having a rethink. There we go. Okay, so it's in different categories. We just we look to see where, where things can fit in. So um, lectures make little videos, or they put up documents or activity ideas. And all this ends up going into the tasks on the website and they become part of the learning tasks. Or their colleagues. See at the bottom there, um, quizzing for formative assessment, for example. Let's have a look at some areas that, that are that are most popular within the guide and the website. And it's these five areas here. We'll look at each one of them in turn. So first of all, assessment plans. After that, we'll look at feedback forward tools, uh, minimizing cheating and asynchronous assessment and assessment literacy skills. We'll start off with assessment plans. We were talking to the Student Association who are absolutely fantastic. They're really active and they, they had a dream. And their dream is that a student comes in in August and they're given a bit of paper online or something that has all the assessments of the whole year for every unit on it in a kind of grid. So they know there's no gluts and everything is aligned and they're not going to get stressed out and things are broken down and varied. That's what they want. I know that's a big ask and sometimes it's only possible to do that block by block and not by the whole year. But in order to work towards that, we've produced a template for staff to use. Let's, let's have a quick look at that now. You may have seen these already and you may be using something that's quite similar. Just a Google Doc, obviously you can do it in whatever you like. Some people use these in Excel. So you see at the bottom, you've got weeks, one to 36 for a whole academic year. Up the side, you've got units, and obviously you've typed the names of your units in your course there. And then you've got funny colored boxes at the side. And let's look at one that's been populated. This, this is for a whole course with umpteen units from that course. There's a populated one. So, you see at the side, you've got the, the types of assessment tasks. This is the key. If you're wanting rich and varied assessment activities, which is intrinsically motivating, you need to show that variety and the suitability for the qualifications and the students. So we, we've chosen our assessment tasks. Hopefully we're choosing these in, in, in partnership with students. And then you'll see where these fall. So you see the first unit, unit A, You've got three assessments, maybe um, in that um, in that uh, unit. You've got F, so you've got a forum post in week three, and then in week six you've got a practical activity, and then in week nine you've got oral questioning. So that's your three assessments. So by doing it this way, you can look down every week and just check you haven't got loads of assessments in one week, or you haven't got lots of really heavy assessments in one week. You know. So it's, you can look at the balance and the amount of workload for a student. And we're also encouraging students to um, lectures to go down the road of project-based learning. And you'll see this black lines here. There's a black line after week seven and after a week, is that maybe things in the way, is that week 14, whatever. So you've got black lines isolating project weeks. So you could, for example, say your academic year is from week one to seven is project one. And in project one, all of these outcomes are, you're going to generate evidence for all of these outcomes. And then weeks eight onwards is project two, and then project three, project four, project five, for example. So um, in a very holistic way, we're taking outcomes from different units and uh, where appropriate and generating evidence within one topical assessment relevant to their vocational skills.
Now, the next area which has been popular and people have been working on a lot, and Peter referred to, is feedback and feed forward. Um, we in the guides have uh, set out um, criteria for successful feedback feed forward. Um, task based, like that, that's where the feed forward part comes, comes in. Rich, reflective, digital first, as our assessment is as well. Of course, inclusive and aligned and accessible. Um, I'll just show you how that looks like on the guide so you can get a flavour of the guide. So that's the page of the guide, as you can see. So in the guide, it has the, the key features of um, summative assessment feedback. And we do the same for formative assessment as well. So we set our deadlines for when feedback must be um, must be submitted. Um, the um, the focus on richness and reflection within feedback, and the need for positivity within feedback. In terms of tools, so for that feedback, all, but also for the assessment. Um, we're focusing on the media um, to see to expand lecturers' um, uh, uh, skills in um, using a rich variety of media which is appropriate to the students and the tasks. We're looking at video feedback, of course, using we're on Moodle at the moment, so using of course the, the video within Moodle, but also Zoom, Loom, and Flipgrid feedback. Flipgrid more for formative rather than summative. Um, audio, of course, with the voice comments and Google Docs. Um, Voki, um, which which is good at low level, but especially for peer feedback, which we've found has really taken off. If you're not um, familiar with Voki, um, uh, I'll give you a quick example of that from the guide. Okay, let's get into a quick example. So in the guide, when you have your tools, we have um, examples of what the feedback might be like, and also um, links to how to act, um, how to actually use the tools themselves. Here's an example for lower levels. And this is an example of feed forward. Some people, um, I like see Joe Wilson rolling his eyes there. <laughs> Some people don't like Bucky, but um, Bucky with lower level students has really taken off. Students are when you're coming from students to do peer feedback for each other. So here's an example of feed forward. This is an improvement on your last assessment. Before next class, I have a secret mission for you. Go to the next module. Prepare five questions to quiz your colleagues based on that information. Make it tricky. Bring them to class tomorrow. Thanks, James. Remain. Okay, get the idea. So, um, it, it, you don't have to be a cat, for goodness sake. You can be anything you like. But it's one way of encouraging students to take the step towards your feedback for, for a formative assessment. So I'm um, just coming back there to our um, our slides. Um, we also, of course, are looking at written feedback and um, Google Docs, turn it in, of course, and quizzing. Quizzing has crept in really heavily to be part of our summative assessment, um, uh, our means of summative assessment, not only for formative assessment, um, though we are using um, formative assessment in, um, in different ways for quizzing. For example, the inbuilt um, quizzing calling it quizzing, the question format you have in Google Slides. Who knew that Google Slides had questioning in built? Many people didn't. And of course, Zoom polls, for example, and the old summative ones we, we always use, like Google Forms and Microsoft Forms. People are also using Kahoot Challenge, the, the asynchronous version of Kahoot for summative assessment. Portfolios have been really big um, in the college for a number of years, but I think they've, they've grown traction. Um, using Google Sites, using Wakelet, using Glide apps for portfolios. And within the guides, there's examples of how to use all of these. Now, our next thing to look at is assessment literacy skills. Um, because without that, um, especially with online learning, um, we're, we're really in danger of students not attempting or not passing their assessments the first time. Um, our, in the guide, we focus on a variety of skills, including unpicking assessment questions, looking what good looks like, um, 
understanding assessment formats and the usual things like how to write a value to them academically. Also how to access the feedback, how to use the feedback, how to use the feed forward, how to write feed forward tasks for their peers, um, how to use the tools, assessment tools, and really importantly, how to self-assess and how to reflect assessment. And the final area to look at um, is something which we're, it's really going to be taken off in the college, especially from September. We're going to, we're going to be running a campaign on um, academic integrity in the college, which we're planning at the moment. And we've been focusing over the last year on how to minimise cheating, especially in asynchronous assessment. That's what a lot of people were worried about. Um, as you move from closed book, how can you be sure it's the student's own work? So we've been focusing on how to minimise that through um, learning design and design of assessments. And um, it's not enough just to say to students, you're not meant to do it. And this is what's going to happen to you if you do. We really have to remove the need for, um, for students to, to go outside to, for help with their assessment. So we've been looking at more personalized responses being generated through assessment. So it, it can't be Googled. It, it's, it's related to their own um, personal situation, the vocational situation looking at video and um, uh, audio assessments or recorded follow-up questions after a written assessment as a wee check, you can revive it as a short one. Um, also submitting early drafts before the summative so you can see the progress of their work or discussing the research if it's that type of assessment. Primarily though, we're looking at these big assessments which we all used to have pre-COVID and how we can chunk these down into smaller and more manageable experiences. People don't feel overwhelmed. They think, yeah, I can do that. I can manage that. We know how much time it's going to take and what resources we need to be able to do it. Of course, we've also been revisiting the inclusivity and accessibility of assessments and the practice, the amount of practice where we're giving students in the format of the assessment and listening to them as they reflect on their assessment experience. But the key thing is unpicking the assessment questions. And I think if you've got to unpick it a lot, there's something wrong with the assessment questions. It's also going back to look at the way the assessment questions are written in accessible language um, and easily broken down into small statements. Uh, I'm just going to jump to our website here. There's a, a specific area we have on, on this. Um, and we have in it um, a, a slide deck which has been really popular, how to minimise cheating, which staff have, have liked. And when you go in here, the task, There we go. And um, which of the following ways could um, ways to minimise cheating could you incorporate into your courses? And then after that, they've got ten reasons why people cheat, and then below it, they've got ways which you could minimise the cheating if you do these things. You know, it's all part of influencing the learning design and activities you could do with students from the classroom. So that's quite practical, and it's been well received by staff. This is something that really has to be built in to the learning plan from day one. Fiona, just to say, could we, we've got only a few minutes left, so could you tie it up for us, please? Yeah, and that's, that's my last bit, actually. And just to finish off, um, we've got a learning teaching conference coming up on the 14th of September, and we would love your, your contributions as speakers, as well as delegates, and the call for, call for speakers is open now and we'd love to hear your views and experiences of assessment and if you'd like to take part the link is there on the slide deck that I've put in. Thank you. Thank you Fiona, that was excellent. What a great presentation. Um, really clear, um, showed us extensive resources that you have available and the comprehensive nature of them.